I feel like an astronaut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Flying high in the sky. Beautiful. Yeah. Is that what that orange outfit was you were wearing the other day? Yeah. It was more burnt tambourine. Gwen burnt tambourine? Fairy. Yeah. <laughs> tambourine? Yeah. I think he means tangerine. I love doing this with you two. It's fucking brilliant. It's like being a primary school teacher. Oh, it's fucking number 12. Popcorn Pundits. Podcast. Podcast. What week is it, Nikki? 45. Jesus H. It's That's a long, long time. That's many, many hours of jibber jabbering. I wonder if, if this had like memory foam in it, it would have the indents of my bottoms in it, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would do. Thank goodness it doesn't. Who are what we? Else is going we in the <laughs> <laughs> it's wiping, but it's fine. This sofa had memories, unbelievable. <laughs> Who are we? Why are we here? We are the Popcorn Pundits. We are at week 45. We are, we are seven weeks away from our first year's anniversary. And we're still of... hunting. We're still hunting for a 10 out of 10 film. We're never going to get a 10 out of 10. Because no, 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 just... We're never going to get a 10 out of 10. But we are going to guide you in the ways of the cinema viewers. Yeah, so we go to the cinema. Mm. And uh, we basically come on here and tell you what we thought about the films that we saw. We do, indeed. Yes. And then you give me a piece of homework every week. I do. And uh, I also try and read out the top ten without you interrupting me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With, hasn't with happened yet. 45 <laughs> weeks later. Also hasn't happened yet. No. But there we go. Nikki is here to produce us, edit us and ensure that we're on the straight and narrow. Well, think... try to. Yeah. Sorry, Kiki, so. you were going to say something. No, I was. There we go. Let's just get used to it. Let's see what <laughs> <laughs> He's feeling a bit sorry for himself. This I know. Say so what? Yeah. Hey, you're right, Peter. I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, shall we carry on? I we shall. Yes. So, uh, this week's top ten through UK and Ireland up until the 2nd of September yep. 2024. I'm folding this over. I, d- I did the same thing. It's not, I'm doing, we, it, I'm doing we, it that way. Oh. You're doing it the other way. Okay, so actually, we'll start at 13. Go on, then. Because you saw Kneecap, didn't I you? I didn't. No, I went to go and see Kneecap. But I bailed on it. Why? I don't know why. There was a reason, I'm sure. Are you was... really excited to I was very see it? excited to see it's it. It's about a Northern Irish rap band. Exactly. <laughs> Sounds right up your street. It does. And I can't believe I didn't... didn't, didn't but these things happen. Uh, these number things happen. 12 was, was Trap. Yes. Which we, which we reviewed. Trap Trap. Some weeks ago. <laughs> wasn't pretty awful, we did wasn't a score of 6.6. Yeah, but Nicky did like him when he got his top off. Yeah, but I mean that that brought the score ridiculously high in it my did. opinion. Yeah, uh, number eleven uh, is Harold and the Purple Crayon, which we we're just presuming what it is. Well, I think it's going to be a rerun of Shazam because it looks like it's got the same actors in it. I don't think it is, but anyway, there we go. We should mm. probably see it at some point. Yeah. Anyway, the official top ten. Go for it, Peter. Starts at number ten. I'm in your. Clammy little hands. Yeah, it's one of the films that we went to see today. It is indeed. Uh, this week, which was Afraid. That's right. Uh, we'll talk so about many that. pictures. We'll talk about that later on. We will. Number nine mm. is Coraline. Yes. It's always number nine because it rhymes. Number nine, Coraline. Uh, number eight is Twisters. We saw mm. weeks and weeks uh, and weeks ago. Probably it's still out. 6.8. Can you believe Peter just interrupted himself and didn't tell it us off? Oh, no, exactly. 6.8 we gave Twisters. Uh, number seven, Blink Twice, mm. which I... Demi reviewed last you did. week you did. Uh, in anticipation of you seeing it this week. Yes, and us finishing off. Yes, you I'll finish also, you off. You also gave it six point eight so far. That is the score. There we mm. go. Uh, number six was Inside Out Two. Yes, James which I went to see. I cried. Yeah, I laughed. I cried. Seven point seven. Yeah. Ah, and this isn't a film, so James, don't shout out. It's not a film. It's not a film. Uh, but number five is Andre Rue's yeah. 2024 Masterlift concert. The power of love. Oh, he's a, love he's a legend. Really. Isn't he? Absolute legend. Piece of magic he is. Uh, number four is Alien Colon Romulus. It is. I didn't hear what you said. I actually blanked you out and now I've kind of backtracked. I wish I hadn't gone back. <laughs> I wish I hadn't gone back. Uh, we gave that one 7.5. Never, never go back. Oh, um, yeah. Alien Colon Romulus. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, it was a really good film. Um, the ending. Number three. Yeah. It ends with us. What did you think of that, James? I didn't go and see it, but somebody else did. Sue did, and she gave it a seven. She did. Good old Sue. Oh, saved us a job, didn't she? She did. Number she did. two, Deadpool and Wolverine. Which you've seen twice, and I've seen once. Yeah. Hmm. We, in- we, in- we enjoyed. Yeah, it, it was, was really a good. great summer blockbuster, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it? it was really good. Seven point nine. Yes. Probably. I think it was. I think it was the fitting ending to that. 
that trilogy of movies as well. Do you think? I think so. I think it's the beginning of more. I hope not. What's the dude called? Gambit. Gambit. Yeah, I just hope they don't make it. Mac go boom. Yeah, I just don't. No, that's not. I'm not. I'm not going down there. But you're a you're a, a number one. Not like bitch under the table. You do like Shannon. Wow. Oh, we can talk about that in a moment. Mm. Number one, yes. which I have seen and you haven't because I'm a better film reviewer than you. Despicable <laughs> Me 4. We gave that a Getting six. Getting underneath the Well, yeah, I mean, it should have been higher, but my son's a dick. Yeah. Um, and can I just say, yes. not counting the one we're reviewing tonight. We've um, seen all but two. Yeah, we've seen, no, not counting the one we're reviewing tonight. You've seen seven out of ten so Ooh, far. Didn't see Caroline. Yeah. You haven't seen Coraline, you haven't yeah. seen Andre Rue. Yeah, exactly. I think we're doing okay as, as film bus. That's, that's not too bad, that's is it? not too bad, not too shabby. We're taking a lot of hits for people. We're kissing a lot of frogs. We are kissing a oh, ton of frogs. Don't get me started. Don't you start. Oh, sorry, don't you start that films. website again. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, that's yeah. just swipe left. Swipe I mean, that's, left. A whole, <laughs> that's a whole nother Oh, actually, it's that way, isn't it? On this, on, no, 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 go left. No, no, but you we're were... being filmed, so oh, yeah. that is left to them. I was going to say, you go right if you like them. But well, you, you, go go, you go right for anything, wouldn't you? I go right, I go down. Dirty, dirty thing. Anyway, so... So this week... Yes. Oh, yeah, what would we recommend people go and see? Have we done that? We are recommending that people go and see Deadpool and Wolverine. But you can see Despic- Despicable Me at home now. Absolutely. So that, that's quite, it's quite expensive. It ends with... 15... I know, I saw that. 15.95. I saw that. I thought that to was... To keep a, it for a week? No, I thought it was ridiculous. That's fucking bonkers. However, we are we are encouraging people to go to the cinema to go and watch Deadpool and Wolverine. It ends with us. Alien, Inside Out 2. We'll talk about Blink twice in a second. Twisters, if you've got a family you want to go and see a disaster movie. Yeah, There's always somebody in the family home. that likes a good disaster movie. And uh, we're going to talk about Afraid. Yes. Hmm. Should we do that? Nikki, what would you like to, us to do first? Would you like us to do Afraid first? Or would you like to do a rerun of Blink twice? I'm afraid it's going to have to be blinked twice. Okay, then. Here we go. So, PZ McPete. Yes. Can you remind me of your score of Blink twice? And no. can you give me... 6.8. Can you get, and, and can you give me, like, a three-word sort of synopsis of what you thought about the film, how you felt about it? Then I can bounce back off you. It's, um, I, I do love the fact you just chuck these questions yeah. at me without any prep or anything no. like that. Or just three words that you've um, got emotions from it. So, um... Mystery. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, controversy. Yes, Ooh. I like that word. Um, and perfume. Ooh, Ooh, I like that word. Yeah. Yes, and it's very relevant. Yes, it is. I think so. After seeing the film, very much so. Yeah. Yes. So this is a film that Peter reviewed last week. It is re- it is directed by Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, Kravitz. Kravitz, her as well. And starring... Think of Ritz Cracker. Yeah, exactly. I quite like a Ritz Cracker. Yeah, I, I quite like Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> With a bit of cheese on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're intermittent fasting, love. You can't have any of that. Anyway, so... <laughs> so anyway, so this film is called Blink Twice. It's out of the sun at the moment, starring Channing Tatum, as you've never really seen him before, I don't think. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm used to seeing Channing Tatum either doing superb and excellent cameos in movies, such as Bullet Train. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and he's got that down to a fine art now. I will always remember the fantastic line he did in um, in the uh, the school reunion movie he did when he played cops going back to school again. Uh, what was it? they they rerun it from a television series that was you starring probably, Johnny Depp. I should have wrote that yeah, down yeah, exactly. Notes, but anyway, he came up. He was renowned as a me one of the very first memes, and he would come and go, "Me name Jeff, me name Jeff." Very funny. However, I'm sidetracking as usual. <laughs> I, clearly all in the delivery. It's clearly all in the delivery. So, um, multi-billionaire takes a group of people to an island to have party weekend. Yeah. Simple as that, really. That's, that's your basic premise of the thing. And, t- and two of the guests were friends in their own right. That's right. Who were basically, who gate crashed a party. That's right. And somehow miraculously got this, this, this special invitation to this 100%. Party. So you see all of this in the trailer. So in the trailer you see uh, Channel Team as a billionaire taking these people away, away, away for the weekend. And then you see snippets of them um, questioning their memory, questioning what's really going on in this island and questioning... What day is it? It is Thursday. Yeah. Never did that. And, and 
No, sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> and, and, and also questioning uh, Channing Tatum's um, character's motive of what they're doing on the island. Okay. Yes. All of that is in the advert. So, so realistically, the, uh, the film itself doesn't come out with too many surprises as the main story. I don't think so. Do you agree? Yeah. Cool. Okay. However, however, near, what I really liked about this film was... Uh, Channing Tatum acting. I mean, I thought he was absolutely brilliant in this film. I thought he was able to give such a wide range of different character traits through the entire spectrum of this film, particularly near the end of this movie when he was giving this whole um, speech about being sorry. And he went through all the different emotions of how oh, to say sorry. That's really interesting because I, I was watching that bit and mm. I thought you'd hate that. No. You loved that. I thought that was really because uh, mainly because I've never seen him go through that range before personally. As and don't forget, we've been watching him for a long, long yeah. jump twenty street, jump twenty two yeah. street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yes. Yes. Anyway, um, now the closest thing I've ever seen him come to any serious acting because it's always he always does cameos, he always does rom coms, he always does something a little bit quirky, a little bit funny, and so on and so forth. It's very rare you see him in a gritty, gritty film. Okay, the bear in mind you've reviewed this last week, so I'm just giving my backup review about how I felt this movie, and I felt that the closest thing he's got to achieving this level of acting ability within the, with his own movie is starring a starring Magic, magic Mike. I knew you were going to say that. Was the Fox Catcher? I haven't seen that. You will be watching this, okay? This stars uh, Mark Rosco and uh, oh, cool. and and also um, what's the name from Despicable Me? Steve um, Carell. Steve Carell. He plays the creepiest character I've ever ever seen on silver screen. Yeah. Amazing. And he plays it. It's a true story about two wrestlers uh, in the mid eighties, and it and it gets and it's a, it's, <clears throat> it's a tragic tragic story, and it's really creepy and dark and mysterious. And Channing Tatum plays a fantastic role in this film. Okay. okay. And I've never seen him really regain that level of excellence in other movies later on. He's always gone back to his his his, uh, his cameo roles and so on and so forth. So I so kudos to him. Also kudos to to one or two lovely little twists near the end of the film because you pretty much know how the film's going to end but even when the film's starting to, to be fair so there's no massive surprises but there's one or two wonderful little twists in, in the movie there's one or two tiny little things that just tweaked it that just, just edged it just slightly for me with the fact that there is a plot all the way through the film in reference to snakes and and, and poison and hypnosis and so on and so forth and what, what did greatly slightly was the whole premise of the of, of, of the film was people forgetting things and people uh, manipulating that situation and yet on the on the, but yet the the way to get out of that scenario was to with, with the snakes involved with it why why go to why why have you know why go to that island in the first place why do, why buy that island if you go to set up that scenario if those snakes are going to achieve that yes you see where I'm coming from yes okay so although you haven't seen the film, what, what, I, I don't want to give anything away because obviously that's, that's a crucial part of the plot. There's one or two little bits in it that just great me just slightly. But overall, I thought it was a fantastic film. I thought it really had remises of uh, Eyes Wide Shut. I thought it had fantastic... Uh, but, but also had, had really <coughs> references to modern day um, events that are quite unsavoury. You had the whole Andrew Tate thing going on there, which is really, uh, un, which is really unsavoury. The the uh, Epstein elements to, to it as well. Um, there, there's there's a weird sort of. I think the only thing that I would say that would needed to be improved upon this movie, I felt that when the scenario came up of explaining what was really going on in an island, it was quite glossy. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. That's exactly how I felt about yeah, it. It was I, that when it actually got to the, the crux of the film, it, it really fell short. Yes, and, and, and it was just it, it was, could it, have been a lot darker, it, and it could have been it could have been a bit smarter. Is, is what yeah. I thought about it. I agree. But I thought the actual, I thought the build up was good. Yes, um, I I thought it, it was a it was a thriller. Yes, and it it did lack that kind of. That block of the film where the tension builds, it, it was it, it literally just went from party to end for me, and and I didn't I didn't kind of I I didn't feel it it I don't want to slag off Zoe Kravitz because no. I adore her, but I don't. She I, won't, I, she think, won't I think she won't I think the direction of this yeah. was slightly misguided. I think what what was 
they, they had an opportunity to, for this to be a really dark, important film. Because yeah, if you think about it, there were references to, to white supremacy. There were, there were, there were references. Basically, if you're white, male and privileged, okay, yeah. this was a film that is aimed at you. Yeah, to, to, as, that's, as, as, that's right. And, and I, loved, I loved it as a yes. premise, and yeah. I just thought it fell a bit short of I the agree. mark. And, you know, and, and I think with a little bit better screenwriting and a little bit slightly better direction yeah. it could have been an absolute corker and it, and, it, and it just wasn't quite yeah I agree I'm giving it a 7.5 oh, oh, fair enough well. okay that's cool yep yeah. yeah. what did Peter give it last week a 6.8 6.8 okay right so it's 7.1 okay that's a fair score I think yeah I um, think so 6.9 on IMDb yeah good yeah. go and see it though I mean I, 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 I'll definitely watch it again at home I think it's going to be one of those movies I, I'm going to I won't mind watching ever so often as a good thriller yeah, I, 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 I think I'll definitely see it again. Yeah, um, and I think we'll we'll see things in the movie that we haven't seen the first time as well. I think I'm going to watch have a bottle of Mountain Dew when I watch it next time. Mm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Other okay. weird drinks are available. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that is Blink Twice. Okay. Good. Excellent. Here we go. Here we so go. So I did a double bill. I did Blink Twice and Afraid on the same day. No, I didn't know anything about Afraid. No, did I, I, I didn't I, even know Afraid was out. I purposely didn't watch any trailers on it. I've just seen, I've just seen it just coming up. I saw a tiny bit about what the film was about. Just literally one sentence, and I thought, okay, I'm going to have a go at that. Okay, so this is directed by Chris White. Hmm. Did you know he's an uncredited director for American Pie? Um, yes, well, um, I, I don't know anything about him at all. No. And, um, and I, there has to be some connection hmm. to have... John Cho as a as a lead character, and uh, he was in American Pie. He was. He was the one that created the MILF terminology, wasn't That's he? That's correct. He was staring at the picture yes. on the wall, MILF, 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 MILF like that. And um, yeah, because um, yeah. But he's a lot. He's a lot older now. Oh, isn't as he? An actor and also a human being. Yeah. Um, and then he plays a dad. He's a film writer, producer, filmmaker, producer and screenwriter who's known for Ants, mm -hmm. Rogue One, Star Wars, American Pie, About a Boy, Twilight Saga, Nutty Professor, The Clumps and The Golden Compass. OK, so he's been around. So this, this film's called Afraid. It is an AI thriller stroke horror movie. That's, yeah, how, they're, that's how they're projecting it. Yeah. OK. It's an hour and 24 minutes long. So it's 20 minutes short of a horror movie. Yeah, and okay. it's... It, it, it doesn't give it much chance to get deep, does it? No, it's an, not. An hour and no, twenty-four minutes isn't really enough time to kind I, of get into. I have to say that for a second nice viewing film, it was a perfect level of time. Yeah, that is exactly. <laughs> right, especially with your, with your amount of toilet breaks that you tend to need. Didn't do any of that, eh? <laughs> Okay, so John Cho's family basically he um, he works in a marketing company, That's right. um, which a an AI. Alexa style mm. um, home aid company yes. decide to use yep. as their marketing company. Um, Did uh, you recognise the actor who played the boss? The not not his boss, but the uh, the owner. I of... did, yeah. So Lightning is his name. Yes, this is my first annoyance. Yeah, right. that, that Sam and Lightning were the name of the two owners of this company. Yeah, one with the haircut. Yeah, I, I did recognise him, and I can't put my finger on where I know him. I'll from. tell you exactly where you know him from. Please tell me. You know him from Late Night with the Devil. Oh yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, a moly. Yeah, yeah. I'll, when sit, he came... I'll sit. I'll sit. i sit again. I know him from somewhere. And when he came up on the screen, I thought. Here we go. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, okay, fine. So, okay, we are going to have also really Suicide Squad as well. Really different, um, um, really different opinions. On and this Oppenheimer and June Part One. There you go. Oh yes, of course. Yes, he's oh, one of the. Yeah. Yes. So he's he's a he's a he's a seasoned dark actor. Yeah. So um, so anyway, so um, called Light. Curtis. Called Light. Ninger. Sorry. Um, so Curtis and his family. Yes. Um, well, basically, Curtis is asked or told by mm -hmm. his boss yep. to take this AI Alexa type thing right. into their house. Yep. Um, and they basically have to put little cameras up around the house. That's right. And this AI bot thing mm -hmm. um, is supremely intelligent and yep. helps them all the family members with different problems in their lives. Exactly. So there is. Um, Curtis is the dad. That's right. Meredith is the mum, and mm. Meredith used to be a uh, what was she? She was like a scientist, or she was yeah. studying. She's doing a thesis. She's or something thesis on, or yeah, other. exactly. I, I, um, but basically, mother, mother's got in the way. 
Yes, on this Earth. motherdom. <laughs> on oh, Earth. Unbelievable. She feels like her brain's gone to mush. Exactly. And uh, and then there are two kids. There's um, Irish and Iris and Preston. The Irish. Well, I wrote the word. The reason I went funny then is because I wrote Preston. <laughs> so I was looking at Preston and said Irish. Now I thought mm-hmm. so. Um, Iris was played by Lakita Maxwell, who I've never seen her in anything no, before. No, no, like. She was brilliant. She was very good. What a fantastic actress! And I have to actress. say, the younger brother was very good as well. I thought uh, he so wasn't I, too annoying. Um, I found him really annoying. No, I, I, did, I didn't like him, but I thought she was particularly stand out in okay. this. Um, in a film which is quite easy for a good actor to hmm. stand out but I, I thought she was she was actually excellent yeah. anyway so um, the kind of horror thriller twist of this mm-hmm. is that the Alexa don't call it Alexa mm-hmm. um, well they mention Alexa all the way through it yeah they do but yeah. that's what the AI thing is basically oh, don't, yeah, it says, and she, and she, yeah, yeah and fuck and Alexa or exactly like yeah, yeah I love that yeah, yeah it's, it's quite funny um, uh, but anyway takes its job maybe a little bit too seriously I mean it's not it's not a massive jump to think you know if, if you if you want to write an AI horror movie yeah this it doesn't take much to come up with this story but they didn't write a lot of it did they no no, no the AI did <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. So, okay. So, give me some opinion. Give me some. Give me some context. Okay. So, I'm, I'm going to start you from the very beginning of yeah. the film. Okay. I really, really like the intros for this film. Okay. The intro to this film really made it relevant to this exact moment we are on this planet. Yeah. Okay. The manipulate. So, at the very, very, at the very beginning of this film, you see, you see AI animated uh, images. Of people, and 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 it's obvious that it's AI because we've all seen these AI images where people are trying to put certain people's faces into certain different scenarios and so on and so forth. And it's not quite perfect, but you know it's getting there. Well, there's faces walking towards you, but that's correct. Pointing in the wrong way, that's and, right. like, and it's all kind of jolty and gypsy. Exactly, <laughs> but you know it's on its way. You know, you know that's happening, and and it's and it's right, and that's exactly where we are at this moment in reference to AI imagery. You know, if yeah, you were, yeah, 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 exactly. But then so, also the opening scene, yes. the, 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 the movie starts with another family. That's right. And um, actually, as a, as, a, as a horror film oh. opening scene... I thought it was superb. Really, really good. Worked really, really well for me. Yeah. Because obviously she's, the, the, the AI software is trying, to, is trying to manipulate and suck as much information from human beings as possible to, to obviously you know, grow as much as possible. Yeah. Now, all the way through this film, there are some fantastic film references... Okay. Carry on, James. So, the very first film reference is Hal. Yes. From 2001. Yeah. And you've got the red glowing light, and they even mention Hal. They do. And they even make a joke about it, and it is obvious that it's that it's a homage to that all the way through this film. But have you ever seen the late 70s, early 80s film Demon Seed? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, the phrase. You should have seen yes on my sexual new yeah. homework. The so Demon Seed is possibly one of the very first AI sort of horror movies that I ever watched as a child. And, and it's, it, it's almost as if they've took this exact story and put it into modern reference. So you've got a, you, but in this case, you've got a scientist who's created, who's created this AI piece of machinery in his basement and it's and it's full, and it's growing much information as possible it's going through the telephone lines yeah, even yeah. before even before the internet existed and so on and so forth and then eventually uh kidnaps or keeps keeps the wife hostage while convinces the husband that the wife is talking to him via telephone because obviously ai can do that yeah. even in the 1970s um and then impregnates the wife with the demon, demon seed. seed the demon seed okay and then makes an ai baby so we've been we've done this before. We've done... Why didn't we watch that film this week? <laughs> it sounds so much better than the one we and saw. And I've probably watched that film about four or five times. Wow. Okay. okay. I used to rent it out and beat some acts and all sorts of things. So for me, yes. this was a film based on mm-hmm. my parents' opinion on AI. Yes. I mean that's what that's what this yeah. is. It's yeah. just like it's oh, scaremongering. AI is terrifying. Yeah, and it's this it's is gonna take happen. over the world. Yeah. And I mean AI mm. is already Ten times smarter yes. than what this film makes it out to be. It is it... To, yeah, to a certain extent. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. But what I did like about this film is that it 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 it, it, it approached all the different factors that you'd expect it to approach. But the ending was, to me, it was the ending was so un-American. It worked for me. It, it, it was it was the shining light at the end of the film for me. Was it? Yes. Uh, because traditionally, yeah. you've got to admit, traditionally in a usual American wham-bam-thank-you-ma'am, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, I understand yeah, where you're they would from. usually 
tear 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 the um, the, the megabytes out the air yeah, exactly. and th- th- throw the microchip in the fire and everything will be fine. You see. So it doesn't have the most Hollywood of endings. No, but exactly. It's just not smart enough. This though is it. It's just a bit thick. It's it's all just a bit laboured and a bit. I tell you what it is. I tell you exactly what this film is. It's a television film. It's okay? not. It's a television film that has had a good stab at AI. It's never going to win any awards. It's a sort of film that you can watch on a Thursday night at home, put it on, 120 minutes, happy days. Yeah, so when I, I started watching it and I thought, OK, this is where we are. Mm-hmm. This is what we're going to see. Yeah. And after that opening scene, I thought this could be yeah. one of those nice surprises mm. of the last 45 weeks. And that was, I mean, as soon as I saw John Cho... I was yeah, but like, I think you've got a slight bias again. No, that. not at all. I, my, my bias came... Mm-hmm. When he started talking. Okay, I, okay so the, the, the AI company yes. decided to choose yes. a marketing company that's got two employees yes. and has got no marketing credentials whatsoever. I, yeah. No, come on, but, but you can I pick know. shit through this film the whole way through because it's yeah. just not... I think it was more than one employee. well enough. No, it wasn't. No, I think I think you, no, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't see the other employees. You just oh, saw the two on. bosses talking, and he went, no, "You're in charge now of the company." But you, you got no feeling that he was a marketeer or anything. No. Like, and the boss was just a knobhead. Yeah. We've all and, got to start somewhere, Peter. Yeah. But these guys <laughs> were the best marketing people. AI, who were taking over the world, decided that this was the marketing guy. Mm. So he's not just starting out. He's the best marketing person no, on the planet. No, they did. They they, they 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 chose that family because no, they didn't. They cho- the AI chose no, they the family. Didn't. Anyway. Um, anyway, so yeah, the whole way through the film, I yes. just thought it fell short and I thought it was really thick and stupid and I thought it was an absolute disappointment. Well, I didn't mind it. So I think we're going to average somewhere around about six. I think you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to give it? Five. Oh, five, wow. nine. Oh, there you go. You oh, say, sorry. Okay. Five, nine. Five, nine. It wasn't brilliant. I'm not lying. Oh, it's okay. 120 you, okay, of, that, of, that re- review which was making me feel like you no, liked no, it more than you did. To me, it's 120 minutes of home viewing of an interesting AI movie, and that's it. That's all you're getting, okay? With a, with a, with a, with a better ending than you'd expect to. I, you saw this one second, didn't you? I did. And I think you preferred this because it was so short. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was less than average. It wasn't brilliant. Yeah. It's 5.1 on IMDb. There you go. How would you improve the scores? Oh, it just needs, it just needs smarter, right? It just, yeah, just because a bit more meat on the bone, really. Yeah, because all the stories yeah. were actually... I mean, the the, sto- the, the um, Iris's story, I thought was quite a cool story. I mean, the school, the but, school story worked but, really well. But why not make it an hour and 50 minutes yeah. and put some meat on the know, bones? Exactly. It was just all a bit shallow and... Yeah. Yeah. Vacuous and... Stupid. Mm. Um, have yeah. you seen the posters for it? Yes. What did you notice about it? There's the a box with something in it. Yeah, a, a red writing. light sticking out. Oh, no, I didn't notice. No, Word didn't. afraid. Yeah. So if the, AI. Yeah. So the AI, if it's in capitals, is leaning and in red. Yeah. Because obviously it's all about AI, or or it's in capitals and everything else is in lowercase. Hmm. Huh. AI afraid. Any more factoids? Um, yes. Uh, the title was um, originally written, They Listen. Yeah. But we know Alexa listens already, don't we? <laughs> so, I, actually, I did I did see, like, you know when you book it on um, hmm. on the Odeon app or whatever, yeah. and you get the little thumb um, thumbnail hmm. picture of what it is, and I didn't realise it was John Cho and his family. Yeah. So I actually thought we were going to see a foreign language film. I thought it was just going to be like a Japanese horror oh, or something. Yeah, so yeah, I think I, that I'll... might have been part of the reason why I was a little bit disappointed. Yeah. But it was... Um, Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, it's the same with the plot as Disney Smart House in 1991. Right. Oh, wow. Um, which is, yeah, a typical... Um, it says a 13-year-old boy wins a computerised home manned by a cyborg maid named Pat. While tinkering with Pat's programme, he sets in motion a wife and mother like nagging robot. Wow. There you go. So rather than having AI, they had a woman. Given a choice, yeah. stay at home and watch, watch X Machina. Or Demon Seed. Yeah, or Demon Seed, yeah. X or Mach- watch Demon Seed and then X Machina, yeah. and then you're getting your AI fix. Absolutely. Agreed? Um, and Terminator. Oh, it's Pointinator. Pointinator. It's up for a chainsaw award. Is it? <laughs> no. Of course it's There's not. no group. Why did you believe that? No, yeah, because there's, I mean, you don't know, but there was, there, was no, there was no blood in it, was there? 
why is it a 15? Exactly. I think it's because of the sexy bits in it. There's no sexy bits in no. it. You get a shot of a back and that's it. There's no reason for it to be a 15. Yeah, I agree with you it's completely. It's not even scary. No, it wasn't. You know, what was the... Um, afraid. What was the... Be- <laughs> no, I was not afraid once. No, you weren't. Actually, I was. <laughs> At the beginning, that got me. <laughs> Fucking jump. You did. Jump scene, maybe. <laughs> Shart a little bit, but anyway, there we go. Right, so there you go. So that is our reviews of Blink Twice. Oh, we're going to talk about Blink Twice just really, really quickly. Yeah. What I really liked about it, the opening scene has got that earth guttering noise, and he goes, and it's staring at the snake's eyes. It's very good. Was that at the very, very beginning? The very, very beginning. I really like that. I didn't set, see that bit. I, I, set me up. I, I watched it a couple of minutes later. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. no, it was very good. Okay. So set I me missed, up. Missed the best set me up, it did. Right, so that is Blink Twice, which we're recommending people to go and see at the cinema. Blink Twice is definitely a C. At... It's, quite, it's a date movie, isn't it? <laughs> Are you asking or telling? Oh, no, I'm too sure it's a date movie. It all depends what sort of stage of it. Not, not, not if you start a relationship. Or First date? I think it's a go and see it, and you've got something to talk about when you're eating pie after the movie. Yeah, maybe. Pie? Yeah. And true romance. What that's, what, that's what you do. You go and see yeah, a film pie, and you eat pie, pie after yeah, the movie. Yeah, exactly. Or, like ham and mushroom pie? No, no, you, it's no, usually. Pie. It's usually or, or, or key lime pie? No, it, isn't it usually cherry in America? Key lime it's a pie. Bit of cherry. Anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly. Yeah, let's go on. So, so we've done our top ten. We've done our two films that've been seen at the cinema. Yes. And now we're going to introduce uh, the listeners to Peter's homework. Yes. So, on a weekly basis, I like to pluck a film back from my archives and dangle it in front of dangle it in front of Peter and say, "PC, PC, PC, go and watch this at home." And you go, "Okay." Yeah. And that's exactly what you've done this week. <laughs> yeah. Mm. What film did I ask you to watch at home this week? Uh, you asked me to watch a film called Arrival. Yes, the Amy Adams. Amy Adams, yeah. Mm. And, um, yeah, so it's made in 2016. That's right. It's uh, a 12A certificate. It's one hour, 56 minutes. It's basically two hours. And mm-hmm. um, you can stream it for free on Sky. Yeah. And um, it's just there, sitting there. Yeah, and who's it directed by? It's, <laughs> it's directed by Dennis Villeneuve. Yes! And this was... This was the practice for June. Beautiful, it, isn't it? It was absolutely what a, a cinema. Oh, I can't get this word out. I oh, know. Oh, Cinematic. You it last week. Cinematographically. Yes. Beautiful. Wasn't it? That mist is incredible, it's just isn't it? Incredible, yeah. and the and the alien ships are incredible. So basically, the yes. premise of this film is we are in the normal world, mm. and twelve alien spaceships come down. Yep. And they it's hover. not even in the future, is it? It's just normal. It could be any time, any place, exactly. anywhere. Exactly. That's what um, I about. And basically, there are there are twelve spaceships which land across the world, mm-hmm. um, and they're basically just hovering across different um, different um, cities and different countries. And they're just floating there, aren't they? They're just it's it's, it's an ominous mm. presence, isn't yeah. it? And they're massive these yeah. things. And they're sort of almost. And to make it even more weird, uh, they, they're not the normal. They're not they're not horizontal. They're they're vertical ovoids. Exactly. Yes. Is what they are. Mm. Yeah. Which I think is a little bit more intimidating. Do you? Mm. I, I didn't put much thought into that, to be totally honest. Altitude. With you. Anyway, so we're in a situation where the 12 nations where these spacecraft are can't really decide mm. how to deal with this invasion, this visitation. Visitation this, at the this moment, visitation, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, because we don't really know why they're here. Nobody knows. Um, they, they know. It's it's not like uh, Great Expectations mm-hmm. when it's just like blah, 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 blah. Mm. There, there is no. Any close encounters. That's the one. And, <laughs> I um, did what did I say? Great Expectations. Jesus <laughs> Christ, it's not that at all. <laughs> yeah, it's coming anyway. out of the marsh. <laughs> so we are we are going to base ourselves around the American ovoid. Yes. And um, Amy Adams mm. is a cunning linguist. Isn't she just? Yes, she is. And I have to hair. say. Oh, I don't. I, well, I didn't. I didn't notice that at all because yeah. I'm not a misogynist. But I. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> but she acts very nicely in this, doesn't she? She's actually very, very good. She's a very good actor. So we are basically spending our time mm-hmm. watching Amy Adams, yes. Jeremy Renner, yeah. and Forrest Whitaker. He's very good as well. Which one? There's Both two men then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, Amy Adams is this linguist, and basically she is. Um, basically visited by um, Colonel Webber, played by Forrest Whitaker, who um, coerces her into coming along to try and understand... Communicate. Communicate with these aliens. Mm. And that's basically what we're watching in this film. That's pretty much it. It's It's, very um, simple. It's a very, very 
um, it's a very, very unusual alien film. Yes. Um, we're introduced to some very, very unusual aliens. Mm. These heptapods. Aren't they just... Seven-legged monsters. Yes. They are huge things. Aren't they? But, um, so in this particular American um, ovoid, mm -hmm. we are, we're introduced to Abbott and Costello. So basically, yes. um, Jeremy Renner's character decides to name these two. Which I think is a lovely... Every so often, when he had, when he had a, bit of a, a well-timed piece of humour into a good bit of writing, it works really, really well. Well, it, it, it increases the interaction, the, the human level of yeah. this film, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And we are talking about the potential end of the world. Yes. And um, so obviously there is an impending doom which is there. And um, Amy Adams is basically trying to decipher um, a language, uh, a, um, a written language mm -hmm. which these aliens create. Yeah. And um, basically very quickly she, um, they, they learn to interact with each other. Um, they're kind of like squids or octopuses, yeah. aren't they? They've yeah, got they're like long tentacles, something like that. Octopi? Mm. Oh, we were just talking about pie earlier on, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. there's no cherries um, though. Um, and basically, they, they um, have this language which is basically um, circular writing that they create mm. in their like atmosphere. Ink blotches. Ink blotches, mm. exactly. And, um, and um, yeah, and Louise, what's her name? Louise um, Banks. Um, basically has to kind of try and decipher what this language yes. is. Um, now, during this period of time, certain countries, China, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Russia, Nothing changes. <laughs> Korea, yeah. basically all decide that they're going to give these alien ships 24 hours to... St oh, or the wait, button's going to get pressed. Exactly right. Oh. And they're going to blow the living bejesus out of them. Or going to try at least. And anyway, so when Amy so, Adams is trying so the to... the clock just... is ticking, basically, yeah, isn't it? Exactly because it could right. be World War Three, yeah. but they've got, to decide, they've got to level some sort of communication, so but we're up is, against but it. But there is uh, an elegant interaction between the oh, humans the in this. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, yeah. So um, the words are kind of wrote to describe yeah. this film. Ele right. Elegant was the first oh, one, 100%. because it is, it's elegant, slow, patient. Yes. It's classy. It's mm. just like, it's thought-provoking. Yeah. And it's, so the, uh, the last word I wrote But was, it's not it's, slow, boring slow. Um, well, apparently, some people do criticise it for the slowness and well, the David interest throughout. But they should just fuck off, exactly. shouldn't they? Because this film, <laughs> yes. it's unique. It's high, and, and if you're, highbrow. And if, if you're in a rush to get to the end of this film, you don't understand you're what's watching the wrong movie. Is. Well, you just shouldn't see movie. Well, actually, mm. you should go and see Afraid. That's, that's what you should exactly, go and do. Yeah. This is a film we'll that um, unfolds at a really wonderful pace. Mm. And um, and I mean, so call it a soundtrack, call it a noise, yeah. oh. call it a noise track, yeah. call it whatever. But there's one bit, and like you were talking about the snake eyes and mm. the bit of, a bit of, yeah. of um, blink yeah. twice, there is a guttural yeah. noise, oh. Oh. yeah, but which, you, is, which carries into the June series. Hundred yeah. percent, exactly. It, and, and so it please, is, you that. It is a noise mm. that basically just makes the hairs on the back of your neck it stand does, on it? end, and it is. I mean, okay, so... It's pleasant, but also unpleasant at the same it's time. Uncom it's uncomfortable. But also really listenable. Yeah, yeah, but music is always used in film to kind mm. of evoke emotion. Yeah. This is a single chord yeah, I know. that basically just gets you gooch tingling. And what, what's, what's really beautiful about the way that noise is produced is that you kind of get a vision of what the aliens... Because you never really see the aliens in full. And you kind of really get get to feel what the aliens feel, rather than... Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, beautifully put in. You, you, can, you, can, you can feel that this isn't an aggressive interaction. Yeah. Um, and while, while um, Amy Adams' character is trying to kind of decipher this language, mm. um, there are some really tender um, flashbacks and, yeah. and, like, you know, rewinds. And, and you're, you're dealing with um, a relationship between her and her daughter That's right. and unfortunately her daughter gets ill with cancer and clearly passes away and then it's, it's a really emotional kind of side story mm. and there's a real kind of melancholy the whole way through this film as well and it, it never really it doesn't really lift out of that oh, you, melancholy you, you, you never do a Nicolas Cage high kick no there, there is no there, it is always no kind of yeah coming yeah. back from that. but and yeah and that's the kind of tone that's set with this mm. but it's done beautifully. Yeah, it's, it's sad. It's really, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. It draw, it draws on those emotions yeah. so well. I thought it was actually wonderful. Thank you. I, I thought it was a really, I'm really, really pleased you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, um, I, I would, I would say mm -hmm. that um, it, it was definitely a practice for June. I, I think, I think, um, I think Dennis Villeneuve has definitely improved as a director. Well, I see. I, I, I think, that, I think it's a different direction for him, and a slightly different direction for him. And I think because I'm not too sure whether he wrote that story or not. Because obviously June was obviously. 
using somebody else's text and somebody else's backstory and so on and so forth. So for him to create that from, from scratch, I think it's just a beautiful... F to me, it's as if the the attention to detail, the realism, the, the lack of wham-bam, thank you, man, the lack of sci-fi explosions and like you know what I mean there's no mad chase at the end it's and there's the no... least sci-fi sci-fi I've exactly. ever seen exactly to me it's as if Christopher Nolan had done it yeah does that make sense yeah it does because it, there, yeah. There's, there's levels of realism all the way through it and you go that could happen That this is this, 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 this is so real yeah, it feels absolutely. really real absolutely and, and the reveal is, is oh, just heart wrenching it's heart wrenching it's smart yes. it, it's thought provoking yeah. how it's... often do you see an alien sci-fi movie that almost makes you cry because of the emotional contact within the characters. I've, I've never seen a film like this. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen a film like this. Yes. You could yeah. see why I was pushing you to watch, and you could see the direction we were going down. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. What are you going to give it? I'm going to give it an 8.5. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Same as Lawrence. Yeah. So, you're going to get 8.9? You can't tempt you with 8.9? No, you can't. You're going to get any better than an 8.9? Does anybody want <laughs> an 8.9? It's, uh, it's a really, really great film. And I, that's where I put it. I think, I think it's, um, yeah, there's, uh, it's really, really good. But there, there are other films out there which I think about. Okay. Good. Good, 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 good. So there you have it. So would you recommend people to watch it at home now? If you if you don't watch this film, you're mental. It I agree. is it is, it is if, if you don't watch this film, there's just no hope for you. Right. It is one of those. There, there has we need that whiteboard. Mm. We need the it's must funny. see. It's funny you say that. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that? What? I've, I've yeah, done yeah, it already. I haven't brought it with me. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect. I've been here next week. And a part of it needs to be mm. um, our must see movies yes. because there are, there aren't that many no. where we see. I mean, okay, anything with a seven at the front and below. Yeah. Is, it's your choice whether you go and see it. Anything eight above? Anything eight and a half above is a must-see yeah. if you've got any interest in cinema because I'm not being funny, you know these films. Mm. Yeah, you, you've yeah, seen oh, yeah. them all, you've seen them all like ten yeah. times, you're introducing them yeah. to me and they are... And I'm always amazed when I tell you, have you seen a movie? And you go, no, and I go, oh my God, this is going to be yeah, so but, good. Yeah, but they are, they're life-changing yeah. movies. So yeah. you know, these, these high eights and nine films mm. are absolutely phenomenal mm. and... You're really getting the hang of this now. This this last month, you have recommended some absolute stonking movies. Thank you. I don't, I don't forget. I'm, it's, it's a little journey I'm taking you on. Yeah, you went. We took a fucking detour for a while, didn't you? I, mean, um, I went quite dark. Yeah, it was just anyway. We had, we had that chat and we've moved on. <laughs> it's all good, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> Stop making me scared. <laughs> the rival has, is I don't like men birthing other men. <laughs> So, oh, sorry. It's all right. You, I've said the fact now, so he's interrupted you. Didn't I know. He? I think it's disgusting. Me. Yeah. Um, arrival is. Did I interrupt her? Yeah, I was halfway through a sentence. <laughs> arrival is sorry, I didn't mean on it. IMDb, um, and <laughs> um, in Hungarian, yes. there's a word yeah. that is saslamitiki or something, yeah, uh, which translates to. <laughs> Uh, salami tactics. <laughs> so it says the Hungarian word to which Halpren refers to is that word. All right. Um, and it means to divide the opposition in order uh, to only have to face smaller, weaker enemies. Oh. So that's called a salami tactic. Is it? Mm-hmm. I thought it was beautiful. And Amy Adams was absolutely incredible in it. My heart was wrenching. Um, she was actually... Dennis's first choice to play the... She'd be my first um, choice. And she agreed to the role within 24 hours of receiving the script. Yeah. There you go. It was, it's one, I of, actually it, did, it's one of those castings for me. Yeah. When I first saw her, I was just like, oh. And then you went, actually... Yeah, she grew. She grows into this film so yeah. well. Really, really good. I did a double really Wilson I, I didn't realise that um, that um, Jeremy Renner is, is such a kind of... Oh, yeah. I didn't realise he was such a like a black or white yeah. actor that people love him or hate him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah and, um, you've, seen, you've, you've seen Hurt Locker, obviously. Yes. Yeah. But I... Um, I, so the, one of the reasons for my 8.5 yeah. was I, di I didn't think that we learned enough about him as a character. So, so we, he was... The, I'm, with, I'm with you, yeah. He's yeah. definitely a side character. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, less than a side character. Mm. And, um, and and then you both have that emotional contact with him, the, the relationship with Jenna's at the end. Yeah, absolutely. It, because they're brought in to almost 
co-organise this right. interaction. That's right. And he doesn't really do anything. No, and, not and, really. and his skill set isn't really used. No. It's all her. Yeah. And I just thought that was a little bit of a... One thing I really liked in the film, and to continue with that realism, and continue with that attention to the detail that both Dennis and Noel, uh, Christopher Nolan do, was the use of uh, gravity. It's insane, right? Because I, I totally agree with mm. you. Um, that's one of those moments that makes me wish that I could have seen this on IMAX or yeah. on one of the big screens because mm. the, the the gravity change in that where yeah. you go from they're basically in a, in a vertical lift that's correct and then the the the, the perspective of the scene mm. shifts 180 degrees and, and it really and freaks you out when you first really it. freaks yeah. you out and also you're looking you're looking at a very very different perspective mm. and that on a massive screen must yeah. have been absolutely insane yeah, well, I think second I went to see that cinema twice yeah I'm not surprised and, yeah. and also you know, with, with the sound that you get yeah. from that eye sense you know, screen mm. that, that yeah. must be absolutely insane and I, we did a double bill one day one, one week on a Sunday where we watched the Muppets film of course you did and and um and arrival oh, I, oh, oh, I did an Amy double bill. Oh nice. Yeah. Lovely. Sandwich that was. Um one last fact. Yes. In the Italian edition of the movie, yes. Albert and Costello have uh, Abbott, sorry, and yeah. Costello have different names. Ah. What do you think the names are? I would say oh Tom and Jerry. Yeah, do you know why? Did you just get that right? Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. Um, yeah. And I did the reason why. I did the reason why because I tell you the reason, I, and the reason, I don't know why I came up with Tom and Jerry. I was just trying to think, so Abbott and Costello probably weren't that historically famous in, in Italy. Italy as Abbott and Costello. They probably, probably named something different. And you probably find that they had to find some other famous double bill act. Please tell me I'm right. So it says, in the Italian edition of the movie, yes. Abbott and Costello are called Tom and Jerry. Right. And the band who had a success in the 80s in each of the ship's landing sites... Right. Is Sheena Easton in the UK one? Is it the one you saw? Is yes. that right? Yeah. What was it in the Italian one? Uh, oh, Prince. Pink Floyd. Was it? Uh, these changes were made because both Bud Abbott and Lou Costello mm. and Easton are all not well known icons in no, Italian culture. I didn't culture. think so. No, oh, I didn't think good. so. Yeah. So that's you got the look. You that, got the look. All of that <laughs> straight out of my head. Yeah. So that's why. Tom and Jerry, how what, what a weird, what a weird guess that was. You knew that. I didn't. Mm. <laughs> I don't she stroke her chins yeah. and go. Hmm. My I'm beard. happy to tell. Mm. Inside, I know. I, I, I know I've got it right. So it's fine. So anyway, so there you go. So, so we've had. So we're recommending people to see Arrival at home. We recommend mm-hmm. people to go and see Blink twice at the cinema. Uh, and there's other uh, movies on the top ten that we're recommending yes. people to go and see as well. Yep, Peter. What day would you watch Arrival? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think. I just... think it takes the Saturday night mantle. Do you think so? It's, it's, it's an absolute epic two hours. It, you are with friends Saturday night with friends or on your own. Um, oh, I, mm. it's not a sa- it's, it's not like a invite loads of mates around to watch. Hey, really? pizza and beer. It's not. It's no. a, it's a sit down and concentrate. Yeah. probably with a nice bottle of Montepulciano and. Uh, <laughs> Or and a Chateau Neuf du Pape or something. Yeah, something mm. deep and um, mm. deep fruity. Deep and dark. Yeah. Deep and fruity. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, you deep and fruity throat. Amazing. What's Peter's homework for next week? <gasps> now, I was going to continue going down the Dennis route. <laughs> and I was going to give you prisoners. We need, we need just to tell a little little thing, don't we? Just, Do we? just before we get on to my homework. Because we both had a similar experience this week at the cinema, didn't we? For different reasons. <gasps> oh yes. <laughs> Sorry, I totally forgot oh, yes. to mention. Oh yes. So oh, yeah. when I went, when I went when I went to see a phrase. Yeah, let's do let's do cinema stories. Um, I was sat um, in the cinema on my own, and literally until like thirty seconds before the film started, mm-hmm. and then these two girls came and sat next to me. Yes. And they had nachos. Yes. And I I'm, I don't normally mind people eating That's next very to me and making loud noises. Yeah. But I'm not being funny. The yeah. girl was eating nachos. Yeah. Like she was trying to piss me off. <laughs> she was she was getting like a stack of three nachos and chomping through each stack of three nachos yeah. like ten times doing that. You know what the problem is. Okay. Um, so the first one I looked. Yeah. I was just like. Are you taking the fucking piss? 
And then she just did that the whole way through the whole of yeah. her nachos. And then she moved on to a big scrunchy pack of Haribo and was like you know, trying to find the right one where you do the packet okay, rustly well thing. Find the right Haribo. Yeah. See, but you I don't open like the Haribos. whole packet. You don't put your hand in a small hole yeah, and rummage. You don't eat them all. You I don't like Haribos. What are we talking about Haribos for? And the, the, the point was noise. Yeah. Yes. And then I told you this story mm. and then you had a slightly oh, different yeah. noise story, well, didn't you? The, the, problem, the problem that you've had, Peter, is yeah. that... Traditionally, when you go to the cinema with somebody like myself... Okay, yeah, you're very, very considerate. And weirdly, I, what I do is, I anticipate when there's going to be a loud noise. Yeah. And then I put the food in my mouth. Or, or, or... <laughs> I do, I went for no, a car no, crash. You or, you, or you're waiting for the grrr noise yeah. before yeah. you open your can of Coke. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. <laughs> so other soft drinks are available. Exactly. But yeah, but yeah, you're, you're the most considerate person yes, ever. And also, if someone has their... Um, phone on too bright or something oh. really, you will give them the daggers like I've never I don't really see you angry very no. often I think maybe well, twice dark, in my life that's yeah. why and um, yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you are you turn into a cinema evangelist. I do, like I'm on. I, le- I lean over and I give that look as well. And to be fair, because I'm sitting down, I don't know how short I am. I could be a skinhead, which is quite, quite mad. Yeah, we're all the same height, sat down pretty yeah, exactly. much, aren't we? Yeah. My mum used to say, we're all the same height. You, you went now. to see the subtitled version of Afraid. So I didn't went you? to see the hearing impaired version of, <laughs> of Afraid. Descriptive. That's correct. So, so initially, when, you're, when, when the film, even with the trailers, you get an audio descriptive of every single sound going into said trailer. Amazing. So you get. You know, Slurpy squel- noodles. Yes, yeah, squelching noises. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Which is qu- which is mildly annoying because you end up reading it by accident and you end up not looking at the image. So what I've had to do is I've put my feet up at a certain a certain angle Fair so my feet are yeah. hiding the subtitles so I can actually look. You I don't know why... You should your um, popcorn pundits pod- I should do. Yeah, yeah my, my, my clipboard. However, that wasn't the issue. The issue was there were one <laughs> or two people in the cinema that were clearly hearing impaired. Yeah. So the way they would communicate with each other would be to the detriment of people that could hear. They shouted really loudly at each other. They <laughs> did. They were shouting at they were going they were commenting on the screen and shouting to each other under the impression that everybody else on the screen was deaf. That's the bloke who shouted MILF. That's right, exactly, exactly. So so uh, that was mildly annoying, and then they stopped after a while, which, which was which was good. So yeah, that's my cinema story this week. There we go. So I just had to no uh, fighting. Sorry, sorry, but I just made homework, a chuckle this week please. that we both had homework just is going to be. I'm, I'm, we're going to revisit a genre. Swim oh, fan. We're going to revisit a genre. We'll go, we'll come back to beauty and 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 things like. I like but beauty. I know, but it's ever so often. Okay, um, I've, Sophie and I've watched this movie twice. She won't watch it a third time. So, this is a film called Perfection. Okay. Okay. I think it's 2018. The editor is looking this up now for the moment for us. 2018. 2018. The Perfection. Is, it, is that called The Perfection 2018? The 2018 one is called The Perfection. Yes. Has it got a violin in it? Is that a violin or is that a bass? Cello? Cello. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Good. That's, a, that's the right one. So, it is streamable on... Uh, uh, on Netflix. Netflix. I've got that. Good. It's true on it, but it's called The Perfection. Okay. It's, um, to me, it's a movie that was going in one direction at one piece, one, one time, and then completely flipped. And I went, ooh. Didn't see that coming. Didn't see that coming. And I thought, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to nestle in and I'm going to watch a James movie. Beautiful. Thank you very much. There you go. I'll look okay. forward to watching it. So it's called Perfection. It's on Netflix. So if you if you are listening to this podcast on a Thursday, try to watch the film before next week, and then you better coincide your 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 uh, your reviews together with Peter. Beautiful. Yes, that includes you, Lawrence and Leo. And what are we uh, what we're we going to see this week? <gasps> well, <gasps> on Friday night. So exciting! Tomorrow night, the sixth of September, two thousand and twenty-four. There's a revisit from a 1980s classic, uh, direct, originally directed by the fantastic Tim Burton, mm-hmm. starring Michael Keaton. Yes. You will like me when I'm angry. That sort of thing. <laughs> uh, it is going to be the family, fabulous Beetlejuice, Geist, Beetlejuice, Geist, on Friday night. Why so Beetlejuice. Like that? how you say it? That's how they say it. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice 2, basically, on Friday night. That's what we're going to go and see, and that's what we're going to be reviewing next week. Can you make it? Oh, yeah, I'll make it in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, and in, and in, in, in homage of uh, the, our editor's hard work, I've got a small total present. Would you like to reveal oh, what the present is? Look at this. 
Yes. Look at that. I like Jesus. that it's in a wine bag. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's not, out wine for the cinema. It's a blow up wine bottle. It's a nacho, <laughs> it's a nacho marabou. Ooh. Wow. You want to show it to Peter? Oh, wicked. It's a handbook for the recently deceased. And like, it's got lots of different tabs for when I'm deceased. So oh, like, so, so this, so, so this, so, so the, the president Nikki has just received cool. is a is a homage to, to the, the original, original and the, the, obviously there there was a book, there was a, there was yeah. a manual of how to handle it's death. Got stickers. It's got stickers and everything, <laughs> and colouring in bits, and his little crossword problems and all sorts of things okay, in there you for can you. Okay, finish the show yourselves now. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you are going to see Beetlejuice, yes, please. or if you are going to watch The Perfection this mm. week, and you wish to give us a review, yes, right. um, you can get in contact with us via our Instagram page. 100%. Um, you can WhatsApp us directly if you mm. know who we are. Yes, right. You can leave uh, a message on Facebook right. or a, uh, a little note comment underneath our YouTube video. Yeah, watch our YouTube videos. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. However, they could also comment on our streaming platforms that we are streaming all of our podcasts on. Yeah, so yes. how, wherever you stream your podcasts mm -hmm. from, you can now send a text message from the homepage of that. Yeah, Nick, um, would you like to explain how that works? So you click into each episode, yep. and just where the description is of each episode, it should say send us a text or send us a message mm. or something. There's a little button. And you click on that button and like we have had in... Shut up! Um, have we got one? There will be, yeah. There, You can send us a message. It <laughs> only comes up with a number, so please let us know your oh, name. Oh yeah, you need to tell us who you are. Unless or we'll you're ring you. Anonymous. <laughs> okay, so... Yes. I'm not going to tell you who this is right. until after you've answered their question. It says, oh. long-time listener, part-time contributor... First time texter. Oh. What film are the pundits most looking forward to seeing over the autumn? For me, I'm excited for The Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back? Yeah, they're rebringing out all the Star oh, Wars. Are stuff, they? they? Right. They've got like Star Wars weekend. I think, there is, I think I am doing a Star Wars weekend, actually. I think yeah. I'm going to be doing all the Star Wars in one day. Oh, yeah, my Jesus. Um, Can you so, yeah, that? so what, what films well, are you most looking a... forward to over the autumn? Well, to be honest with you, Beetlejuice is going to be the top of my list, to be completely honest with you. So, But Me also, too. the film I'm really looking forward to is the, the revisiting of the classic uh, vampire movie, um, t storyteller Nosferatu. Oh, right, OK. And it's going to be starring... Guess who's going to be starring? One of the Scars guards. Come on, Jerry. Oh, was sorry. <laughs> One of the Scars guards. He's going to be playing Nosferatu himself, and I'm super, super excited about that. So, yes, that's, 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 that's the film that I'm truly looking forward to. And I think he's also starring William Defoe in it as well. Oh, wow, OK. Oh, yes. Have you any ideas what films you're looking forward to? No, I'm already kind of coming. You haven't got... That's not on your radar at the moment, no, is it? No, not on no. Okay. Um, For me, obviously, Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. I, I'm also quite interested to see how they're going to do the new... The Wicked film that has Ariana Grande in it. Oh, yeah. Because it's all the, like, how they meet at school and then how they end up in Oz. So I think that's going to be quite interesting. Yes. But I've seen it on stage. I know, but it'll be yeah. interesting to see Apparently how they I didn't like it film. on stage, but I looked at the advert and I went, that looks all right. And I got told off for not liking on stage and commenting that it might be quite good on st on, in the film. There we go. Okay. Um, I think we need to round this off. I think, I think we you might be round this off. Yes, indeedy. Would anybody like a pa 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 pa? Yes, please. Can I order a pa 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 pa